morning. It has been a busy week and a busy one to come, and uh, it seems like it just keeps on rolling faster and faster, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord and just pause. Pause from all the stuff going on, pause from the news, pause from all the, the hustle and the bustle, and just come before Jesus and say, Jesus, come. So we have a few announcements before we get started this morning. Uh, first of all is that Bible study is tonight. It'll be 7 o'clock. It'll be right up here. And uh, you are welcome to come and be a part of that. Everyone is welcome to our Bible studies. Circle of Healing Prayer is going to be uh, Monday at 6. It will also be here at South. And we'll figure out where we're going to be, whether the rummage will be cleaned up or not or what. Uh, we'll either be up here or down there. We'll be somewhere. And uh, we've got several other rooms that we can do that. Church trustees will be meeting right after that at 7 o'clock. And again, we'll either be in the Fellowship Hall, be in the classroom, or be up here in the sanctuary. We'll figure that out. Uh, Tuesday is Staff Parish. If you are on Staff Parish, it used to be called Pastor Parish. But we have staff, and so they changed the name. Uh, that's going to be at uh, 7 p.m. And it says at North. Are we at North? Are we at South? What are we doing? Chairperson Mike? I thought we were at South, but... Okay, so we'll be at South, and we'll send out a note on that to everybody to make sure that they know. And so if you're on that, uh, add count, uh, let's see, uh, we'll go on down the line. Thursday is nominations, lay leadership, and um, I've got some uh, a proposal for that that I'm going to take to nominations. We'll take back. Since 2020 was a complete wash, uh, meetings haven't happened, and decisions haven't happened, and VBS didn't happen, and on and on and on and on and on. Uh, I'm going to be asking everyone who is serving on any committee to just add a year. If you were rotating off 2020, rotate off after 2021 and on down the line and we'll see what happens with that. Um, that way, uh, you know, everybody gets a chance to actually do something. So we'll go there. Then next Monday is going to be ad council meeting. That is fall break and I will be missing that meeting. But Jack, our faithful leader, will be uh, leading on. And uh, we'll be continuing on. Charge Conference is coming up, and so uh, there's going to be some stuff talking about that. Every Wednesday is youth group, and uh, uh, if you are anywhere between, uh, including 6th and 12th grade, we would love to have you or your neighbors or anybody else come to youth group. Uh, we'll have a good time. Our offering, again, is not being passed in the, in the pews uh, uh, because of possibility of of infection of COVID, and so if you would like to give your gifts, tithes, and offerings, uh, the plates are in the back, and that would be awesome. Or uh, you at home, if you uh, would like to mail them in, our post office box is 791. Uh, our October mission focus is uh, obviously the orphanage uh, home um, in Tanzania, uh, Africa. And if you want more information on that, uh, call the church office and we can load you up on that. There's also a website that you can go to and find out about the Lula Orphanage Program. Um, and today is World Communion Sunday. And so if you have not received your um, communion kit, uh, it is a uh, wafer and juice combo in the back. If you have not received one, I encourage you to uh, uh, pick one up at your leisure, either during song, sermon, or sometime during the service. What else do we have? Uh, rubbish sale happened, and um, at this point, we've made about $1,200 for Bethel Mall. It keeps going up because the rubbish is still down there. If you see something you just can't live without uh, sometime today, uh, there will be people around that will be glad to take your donation. It is still free will offering, so if you see something, whatever it's worth to you, that's what it's worth to us. And uh, we will go on from there. Anything else for the good of the order? Then sit back and relax and um, sing quietly. Don't blast it out because we still are social distancing and uh, keeping separate. Uh, the numbers in Indiana are going up, and as most of you have probably heard on the news, um, the infection rate nationwide is going up. So I ask you, continue when you're in groups, please mask, uh, please keep separate, six foot minimum. Um, you know, when you put on your mask uh, covering 
I, I, there was a meme that went around, whatever, that you know, had these people that said, do it correctly, it's over nose and mouth. And then it had the ones who are halfway and they have just their mouth. And they have the ones don't have a clue and it's down on their chin. Well, wear the mask. Uh, you know, it's, it's got to cover, otherwise droplets still uh, fall through. So I encourage you to wear your mask. And if you don't wear a mask, please, please, please physically distance. Uh, we've got to keep this thing in check. Right now, our school systems here in Washington are in green, but all around us have at least gone to orange. Some uh, even a little bit farther away have gone to red. And uh, so we desperately want to keep this thing in check. So pause, breathe in, breathe out, just not too hard. And uh, away we go.
first Sunday we take communion with the United Methodists around the world because that's kind of a, a pattern of ours. But many churches take communion once or twice a year. Always on Easter, always on Christmas Eve, and then usually one or maybe two other times. And world communion is one that we do share with others. And so we want to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who sometimes are persecuted for their faith and persecuted for taking communion and for what all the things that go on with it. We also have up here a wheelchair, and uh, somebody I'm sure probably thinks that I'm getting ready to say, well, we need to pray for, well, we need to bless the wheelchair. And I'll tell you why. Uh, last week, we had an anonymous donor that donated two wheelchairs to Bethel United Methodist Church, one for our North Campus, one for here in our South Campus, but they brought it to the second service last week. And so we had one in front of the congregation at second service last week, and we blessed that wheelchair for anyone who ever uses it and for the blessing and ministry that it will do. And the one that I brought out here, I figured a week later is not a bad thing. And so as we are praying today, we do. We consecrate this wheelchair uh, to a ministry of our church. If anyone who comes in needs a wheelchair or if anyone in our congregation needs to borrow one for whatever reason, we have that option available to us. And so uh, uh, we thank you to the donor, but we also ask blessings upon the use of said chair.
Almighty God, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers that we lift out loud. Hear our prayers that we lift up in our hearts, minds, and souls. Lord, hear our prayers. For we have come into your presence and we feel your mighty power. Lord, there are so many things around the world that we need and ought to be lifting up to you. First and foremost, Lord, here in America, our first family has been hit by this dreaded pandemic disease. Many of our leaders are experiencing symptoms and are being tested, and many are testing positive as well. Lord, in our local congregations, we have members who have tested positive, had the symptoms, and come through it. But Lord, over 200,000 in this country have not stayed alive after being infected. So Lord, we humble ourselves and we pray. We know that you are still God. We know that you are still in charge. And we know that everything that happens, happens for some reason. Show us those reasons, Lord. Give us your guidance, your strength, and your power to forge ahead. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us as well. The ministry that we have been able to do, even though it's been from afar, through our moms, through rummage, through other kinds of fellowship and friendships. We've even seen your face in weddings and funerals. So Lord, bless us and continue to be with us, not only this day, but every day to come. Lord, there's many of us that are struggling with health issues, depression, anger, physical, mental, emotional. Lord, many of us are at our wit's ends. Show us your spirit. Give us your presence and let us not be afraid. Lord, we are in this thing together. We're yours and you're ours. And we ask you to continue to bless us every day in every way. Lord, be with us now as we continue to worship, but we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. When they prayed, they should say, and we too should say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so kids, we don't come forward right now, but uh, we do have a special moment for you. And I'd like to point out this globe. Now, this is an old globe, and, and uh, there, I've, I've seen that there's some things that are wrong with it. Uh, we don't have the Soviet Union anymore, and there's countries here that have, have merged and split and various things. But it represents what we have in the world. We're all on this ball, flowing through space, and we're all in this thing together. Now, how in the world, literally... Can we all get together? We don't speak the same language all over the world. We don't have the same customs all over the world. We don't even look the same. We have different hair color. We have different eye color. We have different skin color. We, have, we are so different. How in the world can we be together on anything? Sometimes we're not even together on stuff in our own households, are we? Somebody wants to go to McDonald's and somebody wants to go to Taco Bell. Gosh! Right? Yeah! And so sometimes we can't even get together on what to eat together. Wow. Well, we're going to talk about something today. We're going to talk about relationships. Can you all say relationships? Relationships. Excellent. 
Relationships is how we get along. And sometimes as brothers and sisters, we may not get along every single moment of every single day. And if you say you do, I know that you're not telling the truth because I have a sister too and I know that sometimes we didn't get along. But we're still brother and sister, and I know you all are too. And maybe it's with your friends at school. Did you know that you're in a relationship with friends at school? Or maybe on your, on your sports teams, you're in a relationship with your sports teams. You're in a relationship with folks here at church. We're all in a relationship. Now, you know, so many of us think that relationships mean all this smoochy, kissy stuff. Ugh, right? Ugh, kissy, smoochy stuff. Yuck. But, you know, being in a relationship just means it's your friends. And you do stuff together and you enjoy being together. That's what being in relationships all about. Here in church, we are in relationship because we sing together and we pray together and we, we do ministry together. And that's all being in relationship. Now, here's the big one. Here's the big one. Y'all listening? Y'all listening? The big one is, is we need to be in relationship with God. Yeah. Because God wants to be in this perfect relationship with us. God wants to love us and heal us, and guide us, and direct us, and make us big, and strong, and, and older, and wiser, and all those things that go along with it. So all around the world, no matter how diverse we are, no matter we have the same hair color, skin color, eye color, whether we're related biologically or not related biologically, it doesn't matter. Because God wants us all to be brothers and sisters all together all around the world. And that's what World Communion Sunday is all about, is being together in the name of God. How cool is that, really? That's pretty darn cool, huh? All right. Okay. We're going to continue our sermon series on the Word. And again, as I have told you many times before, the Word is the Bible. The Word is also uh, what they have called Jesus, the Word uh, was with God, the word is in God, um, we talk about the word, but I've broken it down, and we have used word as an acronym, and so the W was, anybody remember that one? Worship, Worship thank you. What was the O, anybody remember? Outreach. Outreach, excellent, and today we're going to be talking about the R, and I just hit it pretty hard with the kids, so we know it, it is relationships, relationships. excellent. Well, our scripture reading today comes from Hebrew, or Hebrews, um, Hebrews 13, 1 through 17. So uh, here we go. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Now, I could stop right there, but I won't stop right there because I just told you that my sister and I, we're really good relationship, but sometimes we just disagreed and we got into, you know, I've still got scars you know, I talked about last week about having this cow lick in my head where, where she hit me in the head with a shovel and it scarred. And now I have this permanent Dennis the Menace cow lick. So, so sometimes as brothers and sisters doesn't meet up with the total expectation. Okay? So here we go. We keep on going. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hospitality is important. Our relationships, our showing God's love is in our hospitality. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money. Be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. It is good for our hearts to be strengthened by grace, not by eating ceremonial foods, which is of no benefit to those who do so. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most high place as a sin offering, but the bodies are burned outside the camp. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city, but we are looking for the city that is to come. 
Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that open profess his name, openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work may be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no benefit to you. May God bless us for the hearing and the reading of the scriptures this morning. So, relationships. Well, first thing we need to ask, and I've just talked about this with the kids, is who are we in relationship with? Who do we have relationships with? Well, basically, we have relationships with every single person we meet. We have relationships with people at work. We have people in relationships with places we play. We have relationships with everyone we meet. Some of them are good relationships. Some of them are not so good relationships. Some of them are strained. Some of them may even be a relationship on, we're just going to agree to not like each other. It's still a relationship. It's just not a good one. But what about those people? What about those people? Now, you all know what I'm talking about when I talk about those people. Yeah? We love to be in relationship with the people that are just like us. That like the same kind of music, that like the same kind of food, that, that you know, act and breathe and talk and spend all the stuff. If, if, if they're really like us, we really enjoy those relationships. But then there's the those people. And they may, again, if we're a Taco Bell, they may be an Arby's, okay? If we're a Democrat, they may be a Republican or vice versa, or even a Libertarian. Okay, I make fun of politics because I can. I don't actually think or believe any of all that, okay? But we think of those people, those people who aren't United Methodists. I won't pick on any denomination, even though I could. Those people who have a different skin color, different uh, socioeconomic, live in the wrong part of town. What do we do with those people? Well, Christ says we love them. But, but Pastor, we, we don't even like them. How can we love them if we don't even like them? Well, you love them. Christ never told us to like them. Christ told us to love them. How do you love? Well, the church should do these things, okay? As a church, we should naturally, normally do these things. First, we turn outward. If we focus everything inward, if we focus on everything on keeping us comfortable, keeping us in line, keeping us happy, healthy, holy, whatever, but we shun everybody else around us, what good is that? What good does that do for the kingdom? What good does that do for the ministry of our church? What good does that do for the gospel of Jesus Christ? It does no good whatsoever. We need to, as a church, know that our ministries should focus on the people who are not yet here. You notice I said not yet. We need to expect guests and visitors. We need to expect the those people. We need to expect people that aren't just like us. And we need to love them and nurture them and welcome them. But, 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 but wait, preacher, they're going to have different ideas. They're not going to they'll wear the right clothes and they're not going to say, they're not going to have the Lord's Prayer memorized. So, when you first came to church, did you have the Lord's Prayer memorized? Did you have every song memorized out of the hymn book? Did you know when to stand, when to sit, when to bow, when to curtsy, when to kiss the ring? For you Catholic friends of mine. <laughs> I think I did the wrong hand, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We didn't know everything, and we still don't know everything. And so when guests and visitors come in, we need to expect that they need to have Jesus, just like we do. We need to be missional, open and inviting. If we have all of our catchphrases, 
You know, I, I had a guy that came in one time, whatever, and he says, Preacher, I'm still trying to figure out why these benches are called pews. Is it because we pass gas in? Oh, dear God, no, don't say that in church. But again, we have bulletins and pews and a narthex instead of benches, programs, and a foyer. Catchphrases. We need to be intentional about being inviting, intentional about being open to the other. And we need to make sure that we know that it is not all about us. We need to know that it's not all about us. So hospitality comes into play. When we show hospitality, we've shown hospitality to angels and didn't even know it. Hebrews, it says so in the Bible. Well, what is hospitality? Well, when newcomers come, we need to make sure that we genuinely really care about the reason they are here. Wow, integrity and, and yeah, yeah we, we can fake integrity. No, you can't. It's all about knowing you know, why, why would somebody who's never stepped foot in a church, why would they come to church? They're feeling a hole, a Jesus-shaped hole in their soul, a Jesus-shaped hole in their heart. They're feeling lost or least. They're feeling pain. They're feeling desperation. They're feeling depression. They're feeling all these feelings, and they don't have any place else to turn. And so they come into a church, any church, ours, theirs, others, doesn't matter. They come into church, and what do they need to find? They need to find a loving people that will care about their issues and problems. We need to want the best for them. We need to care about who they are and where they come from, not just about our own comfort. We need to treat them like a whole person, not just like another number. All right, fresh meat, boast in the offering plates. It's not about that. It's about finding who they are and offering them the free gift of grace and the free gift of Jesus. And most importantly, our hospitality boils down to this. Do we minister at or with? Ooh, stomping on toes, preacher. What are you talking about? Now this year with COVID, yes, Bethel Mall was worshiping, or not worshiping, was ministering at. Here's your stuff. Here's your stuff. Here's your stuff. And it was so bizarre. Wasn't it weird? It was so weird. We couldn't hug on these little kids. We couldn't love them. We couldn't share the gospel one-on-one -on -one and, and in a holy huddle. And we couldn't lay on hands and pray. We could, there was so much we couldn't do because, well, we didn't want to kill them. And so we did a lot of ministry act this year. I can't wait for them to figure out some kind of, of vaccine or, or somehow that this thing gets eradicated from the earth, whatever, so we can get back to ministering with and loving on. Hmm. So what do we need to know? What do we need to know about relationships? Well, I wish I knew anything about relationships. I'd write a book and make a million and away we go. But it seems like relationships are always changing. What we need one day is not what we need the next day. We need something else then. And who do we get it from? Do we get it from a spouse? Do we get it from a parent? Do we get it from a coworker? Where are our needs met? Relationships are tough. But in the church, in our relationships in church, we need to know that God loves us and that we have significance. Amen to that? We need to know that God loves us even though we know what's in our closet. We know the skeletons we have. We know the ways that we have fallen short. We know the ways, and but others don't. Others in, sitting around us don't know our shortcomings, don't know our faults, don't know our, our fears, don't know our pains. But God does. God knows everything there is to know about us. And so trying to keep secrets from God is an act of fertility. It ain't going to work. And so we need to know that even though we have all kinds of problems and issues, God still loves us. And we are significant. We're needed. We're needed in the kingdom. We're needed in church. We're needed in our relationships. We're needed in our families. We're needed. 
We're not alone. None of us are alone. Maybe just maybe we're living alone or we're, we're you know, having alone times and we're feeling the pain of the loss of loved ones, whatever, but we're not alone because we're in relationship together and we care. We're in relationship with God and God cares. And that's in good times and bad, whether we're celebrating weddings or remembering folks at funerals and anything in between. We need to know that the, print, the, that the peace of heart and mind and soul is only through the grace of Christ. You cannot have peace in your life if you don't have Christ at the center of your life. There will always be that what if. There will always be that one more. There will always be that yearning and longing for something else. Peace comes through Christ. We need to learn and offer and accept. Learn to offer and accept forgiveness. That's hard for human beings. We offer forgiveness all the time. Somebody does us wrong, we, have, we, we fully forgive. Fully forgive. We continuously forgive. But when we've done something wrong, we beat ourselves up and beat ourselves up and beat ourselves up and beat ourselves up. Christ died for all of us, for the forgiveness of all sin. And when we've fallen short, we need to accept that folks have forgiven We need to know that life is not having something to live on, but something to live for. It's not about the cash flow. It's not about the, prior, or the, the prestige. It's not about the, the high levels that we reach in whatever company or business or anything else. It's not what we have to live on. The one who has the most toys when they die, still die. But we have something to live for. We have our children and our children's children. We have our neighbors. We have our friends. We need to have purpose in our lives, and God gives that to us each and every day. Purpose is all about the kingdom. So here at the United Methodist Church, we have a catchphrase, open hearts, open minds, open doors. Our open minds means that we need to listen to others. It doesn't mean that we need to fall for everything that comes down the pike. You've got to stand for something or you will fall for anything. But you need to be open to hear what they have to say, to hear where they come from. The diversity even in Washington, Indiana is amazingly diverse. We need, to have, we need to be able to get out of our comfort zones. If we put up the stone walls around us and say, if it doesn't meet our criteria, it's absolutely wrong. We've got to break that down. Because relationships are not built through stone walls. Relationships are built on a matter of trust and openness and dialogue. And then we need to have acceptance in our lives. We need to still say a sin is a sin, yes, but we need to say that we accept you for who you are and where you are from. As I said, globally, we are a diverse people. And we need to accept that sometimes cultural norms are not the norm. So where do we go from here? Where do we go with our relationship building? Well, Matthew 18 says this. At the time the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to him, placed a child among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Have you ever seen little, little, little kids with a prejudiced heart? Have you ever seen little, little kids who aren't willing to play with anybody, anywhere, anytime? Have you ever seen a little, little, little kid 
that didn't have the peace of Jesus among them, even if they didn't know who Jesus was. We then, in our relationships, need to be like little children, trusting, smiling, enjoying, blessing each other along the way. So in our diversity, in our global universe that we have, in our global kingdom of God, today is World Communion Sunday. And in every nation, in every language, and in every possible way, we honor and celebrate that. Normally what I do on World Communion Sunday is I have this big bread buffet up here from breads from around the world and we get to pick and choose and we grab bread from Africa or we get to grab bread from Europe or we get to grab bread from wherever and, and you know, uh, this one church I served, I even had, you know, like biscuits and said it was from the South. You know what? Most of the biscuits disappeared during communion because everybody said, I ain't had buttermilk biscuits for a while. And they had buttermilk Jesus that, that, that morning. But we are separate, physically separated, still yet today. And so it's yet one more weird way that we celebrate Christ is with the communion combo kit. If you haven't received yours, go back and grab one now. But on the night that Jesus gave himself up, he took bread, he blessed it, he asked God's blessings on it, he thanked God for it, and he passed it to the disciples and said, take and eat. Likewise, he took a cup and he asked God's blessings, and he thanked God for it, and he took, said to his disciples, take and drink. And so we're going to do the same thing. These cups are kind of weird. The top piece, in the cellophane, opens up and you get to the wafer. The bottom piece opens up and you get to the juice. And so as a body that believes that Christ is the Messiah, the sacrifice for all. Take and eat, take and drink. And for those of you at home, whatever bread item that you have and whatever you can use as juice in the United Methodist Church, these are symbols, and so you can use whatever symbol you have to use as the body and the blood of Christ. Just remember that when you do it, take communion with a penitent heart, Repent of your sins and say, say, tell God that you're sorry and know that you are forgiven and blessed. Folks, know that you are also forgiven and blessed on this Holy Communion Sunday and that we are all in this thing together. Amen. This comes from, the song comes from Numbers chapter 6, verses 24, maybe 25, 26 possibly, but... This was the way, this, this verse is always the way that we ended our UMYF meetings. And somebody sent this song to me, the first time I heard it, somebody sent it to me on my birthday as a blessing. It's called The Blessing. And I think if you were going to, like I, like I mentioned before, if you have somebody God is nudging your heart to think of or pray for someone, and you're not sure exactly what to pray, Go to Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, and pray this blessing over them.
Son and Spirit, I ask blessings to be upon us all. Amen and amen. amen.